everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. I am so, so super excited about the project that I am starting today. Now if you have watched some of my more recent videos, you know exactly what I am talking about, but I am finally starting on Felicity. Oh my god, this has been a dream dress of mine forever. Like, I fell in love with this dress as a child. I never owned it as a child. I did have Felicity, but I did not own this dress. And then I bought this dress for her before I started back into this whole American Girl thing. Like, I don't know, I want to say maybe 20... 19 maybe even 2018 it's been a while and since then I have wanted to make this dress for myself so again like before I even started off on this new American Girl doll kick I have wanted this dress for myself and it has been a matter of sourcing the fabric and all of that and if you follow me on Instagram which I'm also at Lady Rebecca Fashions over on Instagram you will know some of that headache of sourcing the fabric I've talked about it here on this channel as well but Basically, over a year ago, like a year and a half ago, I tried to buy it from Silk Baron, and it wound up coming in two different pieces that were two different dye lots, so that did not work. That went back to them. And then Renaissance Fabrics ran out of it for a while, what I thought was it at least, and then they got more of their blue sapphire silk back in stock, but these swatches of like what their blue sapphire is now, these are both the, the previous version and the current version of the blue sapphire, they just do not match. They're just not a match for this dress. And because I want to be able to like bring Felicity with me when I'm wearing this dress, this just wasn't going to work. So I found a seller on Etsy who had a poly taffeta and the poly taffeta is basically a perfect match to her dress. And her dress is made out of poly taffeta. So I suppose that it is appropriate that I use the poly. So that's what I'm going with. It arrived last week. I bought nine or 10 yards. I can't remember which one I bought, but basically I figured if I'm doing the poly taffeta, I am going to make it a fitted back, which is like Felicity's dress. Her dress has a fitted back. A lot of people when making this dress have kind of gone for the more like sack back look because it really would have been more historically accurate to have like a really nice evening gown of the time be a sack back with the Watteau pleats in the back. But since I'm going with polyester, I might as well go with the doll look. And yeah, I'm going to be making a fitted back look. And today begins this project. So I am going to be cobbling together some patterns for this project. And I'm honestly not even positive like what pieces I'm using from what. I have been using a lot of like the Scroop patterns recently and so those are what I know fits me well but there is no Scroop pattern for a stomacher fronted gown so that's why I have to kind of combine things together. So I think that I'm probably going to combine together the simplicity pattern that has Abby on it, which is for a sack back gown, along with the scroop patterns, and just kind of figure out how to do this. I'm I'm winging it. You guys know if you've watched my other videos that I am not super into historical accuracy when it comes to the 18th century. <laughs> because I think they did things strangely sometimes. So this is definitely going to be a cosplay version of Felicity's gown, but like an 18th century cosplay, if that makes sense. It is not going to be historically accurate. It is going to be cosplay. And ideally, I am going to put as much of this together as quickly as possible, because I really, really want to enter this gown into the cosplay competition for Emerald City Comic Con. Now, Emerald City Comic Con itself is like a month and a half away. I have so much time. Totally not worried about that. But... The deadline for the cosplay competition is January 27th. Today's January 17th. So I have to have like enough of it done in the next 10 days to be able to prove to them that I'm worthy enough to be in the competition, I guess. And I have no idea if that's going to be possible at all. But basically my goal is in the next week and a half or a little less than that because I also have to like take pictures and put them into like an application to send them to enter the thing. But my goal is to basically get the gown itself done 
and just to worry about like the trimming and the accessories and everything for after that. Now I already have a red cloak so I am not going to be making her red cloak but I am probably going to be wearing it with the outfit, the one that I already made. I am ideally going to try to make her muff as well. I would really like to do that. Maybe pull out the embroidery machine and make her cute little embroidered muff. I am planning to make her pinner cap too. So that looks like that. Uh, just little lace edged cap. That's super, super easy. I mean, like I could probably do that in an hour. Um, and then of course she has two different stomachers. So I am going to be making both of the different stomachers. I've actually already sourced the ribbon for the other stomacher that she's not wearing right now. This is what the other stomacher looks like. This is the ribbon that I got. So it's a pretty close match there. I found this on Etsy. I will link to both of these Etsy stores for the fabric and the ribbon down in the description, by the way, in case you are looking for any of this. As I said, I don't yet have the lace for that. And I don't have the lace for like her sleeves or around her neckline or her pinner cap. But honestly, I'm planning to probably get all of that at Joann's because it's all pretty standard looking lace. Like I don't think, knock on wood, that it will be that much of a problem to find those items. And then lastly, I would love to be able to make her mitts. I am not going to make mine leather. I just don't know how to work with leather. So she does actually have leather mitts. You can see them right there. They are embroidered. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how to work with leather. So mine aren't going to be leather. Mine are going to be something else, but they'll be white with the embroidery. Ideally what I wish I could make, and I have no way of making them. I wish I could, but I wish I could make her patents. So these are patents. They were worn over shoes and they have little like rings on them so that they could walk on slush and snow and stuff like that, um, without getting their shoes all gross. I wish I could do patents, but I have no way of doing metalworking or woodworking. So unfortunately that is going to be out of a possibility. Also, I probably wouldn't be able to walk on them. I'd probably just fall. So there's that. But yeah, I'm going to do the whole shebang. Oh, and the necklace, which is just a little pearl on a ribbon. But I am so, so excited. This has been such a long time coming. So let's go ahead and start on mock-ups for this gown. So I actually decided after cleaning my absolute mess of a sewing table, look how nice it is now, that I'm not sure that I really have the brain energy left for a bodice. So we are switching to skirts. And I feel like it actually looks pretty decent. That's the polyester fabric. It has not been ironed or anything, but basically what I was trying to figure out to do here is, do I want a three panel skirt or a two panel skirt? I bought enough fabric for a three panel because that was the recommendation that I got from Kate from Willoughby and Rose. And I think I am gonna go with a three. It does actually go all the way around, no problem for a two panel skirt because this is one quarter of a panel pleated up to one quarter of the skirt right now and it's fine but I just feel like if you look at the hem despite all the wrinkles and the mess on the floor that it seems like it's going in a little and it doesn't seem like it quite has the amount of body that I really want it to have so yeah I think I'll do a three panel skirt the one problem with a three panel of course is that then you don't have the seams that line up with like where pocket slits are which on this one is like way back here so yeah that's kind of always my thing of like 18th century pocket slits just they're so hard to get into but three panel does seem better so anyway I'm gonna rip these panels and sew them together and get to pleating and see if we can have a skirt by the end of today all of my pieces are now assembled I say all of them and not just like the three of them because I actually took one of the panels and divided it in half and then I attached both of those halves onto the full front side panel. I'm hoping that this will allow me to kind of pleat it around and have it line up with where the openings are on like the quilted petticoat. I'm guessing I'll be wearing the quilted petticoat with this, though I'm not honestly positive, but that is kind of my plan at this point because it's January now, but who knows how it'll be in the beginning of March. But yeah, I would love to be able to like have that line up here so that I can actually get at my pocket slits. So I want these slits to be a little bit farther back than like just the side. So that's why I put them on the front. So hopefully that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and pleat all of this up now. I am planning on pleating it up to tapes that will tie at the side as opposed to like Felicity actually has like little Velcro tabs. 
Obviously that doesn't work for a human and it is really not historically accurate and I want to be a little bit closer than than that. So yeah, I am planning to tie mine at the side, but yeah, I'm going to go pleat it up, put it on some sort of tape, probably like a bias tape. I'll just see what I have and then all it will need is a hem and the petticoat will be done. As it turns out, I did not have any blue bias tape that is double fold, so I will get some of that tomorrow, but all of the pleats are now done, basted in place, so I just need to put the bias tape around them to create the ties for the waist. I got my bias tape from Joann's. It is the extra wide double fold, so it's the one that like folds twice or three times or whatever. This is what I use for the tapes for the waistbands of 18th century. I've done a whole video on like super super easy 18th century petticoat so I'll link that up here and down below in the description but basically I'm doing the same method for this petticoat. It's really very easy. So the one thing that I'm doing differently with this petticoat versus the one that is in that video is that in that video and in a lot of my petticoats for the front one I will put the bias tape on and then I'll like wrap it around and I'll tie in front. I don't think I actually want to do that with this because the petticoat will be underneath like an open front gown so basically it just makes more sense if it ties in the back since that's the last layer to tie. So yeah I might not need both of these. I got both just in case but I might be able to get both sides front and back out of one. I guess we'll see but I'm gonna go ahead and put this on then all that will be left is the hem and that will wait until I next put stays on so that I can put everything on you know mark my hem all of that sort of stuff. Now I know traditionally 18th century speaking they would level a hem actually at the waist. I think that's weird so I level my hem at the hem because it makes more sense to me and I feel like the other way you have to have multiple people helping you and I'm by myself. So yeah, I will level the hem once I have it on. So I thought I had had an amazing spark of genius to try on my old court gown bodice and see if that pattern, which I still have, could be used for Felicity's bodice because I made this in 2014 when I was at my smallest and then I wore it again in 2019, I think maybe? and realized at that point that I needed to kind of put in a little stomach or front to be able to get it to close, but the rest of the bodice worked over those stays that I had originally made it over, which I think were the JP Ryan fully boned stays, I wanna say. So not these new stays that I just made this last year. So I thought that it would work, that I could like put it on and be magic, and I would be able to use that pattern and everything and might have to adjust the sleeves a little because I know my arms are bigger, but Otherwise it would work. Um, but as you can see by the neckline, now granted my chemise is probably up a little bit high and I don't have the stomach or front in yet because it's still pinned to this hanger. But I don't think we're really anywhere near fitting. Like first off, the sleeve is like so tight that I can barely get it on. But also the waist is like really high. Like, I don't know how that happened. And I don't know if it's just that the whole thing needs to go back, but it <laughs> can't because the sleeve is so tight or what, but the waist is like really high in the back. So I don't know that I can adapt to this pattern because I just feel like it's too far off. But maybe I could play with it and just lengthen it. In the back, like the front actually, the front seems like it's the right length. It's just whatever is going on back there that is so high. I mean like, it's up here, my waist is like here. So we're like an inch off, I think. But, and then with the sleeves, I'm just like, I can't, it, it's so tight everywhere. Like the shoulders and the sleeves and everything, I just can't move my arms at all. And I knew that would be a problem. But it'd be really nice to be able to start with this as base. I actually would have to widen this a little bit for Felicity. So I would need to take a little bit out of the bodice because originally this was the center front closing bodice. So maybe I can fix that and just like maybe bring up the neckline a tiny bit and bring down the waistline in the back significantly. And then maybe that would work. So since I have the pattern, I think I'm gonna try that. 
So as I am so apt to do, it would seem, I have once again made my mock-up enormous. I don't know how these things happen to me, but I seem to have a knack for making enormous mock-ups. The good thing about an enormous mock-up, of course, is that you can cut it down. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that because as you can see, it is crazy long in the waist. It is just way, way, way too long now. I clearly added way too much. I think probably I added too much to the length because it was so hung up around my arms in the other one, like around my arms and the shoulders and upper back and everything that I just could not get it to hit my waist because it was stuck up here. So I wound up with this mock-up. I changed this whole shape of the neckline. I kind of combined the previous pattern that I had for the court gown with the pattern from like the Abbey Simplicity pattern, the one with Abbey on the cover. And that way I realized, cause like the other one came around like this with the neckline, but with this sort of like stomach or front, you want it to kind of gradually slope down. So that's what I did here. I also had no idea how much I needed to add to the shoulders. So there's, there's just too much in the arms eye also. So that needs to get cut down. I added a quarter inch to each of the back pieces on the sides to make the back larger in general. And I think I did also add a quarter inch to the front here, but I took away an inch from the center front to make this taper. And then I made the shoulders a lot wider, but only on one side, cause I kind of ran out of place to cut on the other, which it turns out that's really the width I need. This is too wide. So yeah, I have a lot of alterations to do to this because it's coming together in the center and there needs to be a stomacher. So, uh, yeah, this is too big, but like five plus inches. <laughs> so I have a lot of alterations to do and I'm gonna go figure them out now. All right, I cut down and took in a whole bunch of stuff kind of all over. I think the back is nearly perfect at this point. It is too rounded in these tails right here. So it should be like a nice little point. So I do have to fix that, but otherwise the fit of the back, perfect. Like I'm, I'm just loving it. I think it is spot on and that's great. The front is close, but not quite. For one thing, I'm definitely still getting wrinkling here. I don't know how much of that is because although I cut off the bottom here, I did leave seam allowance. So I think the seam allowance is kind of getting in the way and I may have left too much seam allowance too. So it might need to come up a little bit higher. And then this is just coming too far forward. Now, some of this does have to get like turned back and finished obviously and then the stomacher would go under that but I think that it's still like fairly like it I think it's more than an inch I don't know I'll have to look at this in the mirror we might actually be pretty close on that once I like fold things out of the way in which case fantastic so yeah I'm gonna take a look more at the front and see what needs to change but uh and I'll also draw that in that new back tail shape and hopefully then we'll be good to go all right, so I've kind of put in a fake stomacher piece this time. It's the only thing that I didn't press down on the edges. I've pressed down all of the edges of the bodice here. So like all the way down the front and also over the hips, waist area, etc. And I think it is looking really, really good. I cut away the back so that it's just a little point. I'm not sure if there is actually too much room in this point right now. I should put it on over everything but I have a friend coming shortly, so I don't know, but I, I probably should put it on before she gets here and just check that. But yeah, I think this is looking great. Otherwise, as far as like the rest of the bodice goes, I think it just looks fantastic. So I am ready to use this as my pattern. I wasn't quite sure like about cutting away all of the excess here. I am gonna pin it in place to the stomacher just to make sure, but yeah, I think that that is really good. I think I just need a half inch of seam allowance here because then basically like the bodice and the lining in 18th century, I think usually wind up getting folded in on the end and go like this and then like you whip stitch along the edges. I think that's how it normally works. So yeah, whereas like Felicity's is just like turned in, surge edge exposed, etc. So, but yeah, I think we are in a good place. I'm gonna pin this kind of in place and mark where it goes on the stomacher so that I can cut off some excess because I think it's a little bit wide, but we're just about there. 
So I'm really glad that I put on the skirts because it is totally changing the fit of the bottom of the bodice. I need to bring my waist up actually even higher than just like the half inch that I had folded it before. It was trying to make this flip up. So I'm glad that I had the extra room in here because I think that's necessary. But obviously there are issues going on here because all of a sudden we have a lot more fabric and this is not closing like it was. So I have to figure out where that is going to meet on the stomacher. And I think that taking it up over the waist will help because it's part of it is just like it's not getting there. So yeah, let me figure that out really quickly. All right, I figured it out. So I'm shortening the entire bodice by a pretty significant amount, starting with like over the side hips here and then even shortening the front as well. So I know you can't probably see what is going on right here, but basically I've just like folded everything up. And so there's lots of things kind of randomly sticking off, but I'm gonna draw in these new lines that I have created and then I will add a half an inch down for seam allowance, but then I'll be able to cut this all out of the blue taffeta. I've done this mock-up, by the way, in taffeta, just so it would act kind of the same, but this was just like scraps that I had. Um, but I will cut it out of the blue taffeta and also cotton for lining, and I'll be able to put together the bodice. And then the overskirts are super easy. They just get pleated to the bodice. So um, they'll basically be cut pretty similar to how I did the petticoat. And yes, yeah, so that's all good. I figured before I actually go and cut out the taffeta, you might be interested to see what the pattern from the Simplicity Abbey pattern looks like on top of mine. It's actually kind of similar-ish, but you can see like mine is a lot longer there and the arm size is different here. But yeah, it did wind up being fairly similar to this pattern, even though I was kind of combining this pattern with my court gown pattern. I have all of the pieces cut out now and everything is flat lined. I have flat lined it to just like white Kona cotton because that's what I had that would have worked. And I was waffling for a while about should I flat line? Should I put this together like the 18th century method instead? And just trying to figure out what would be best. And finally it was just like, okay, I'm making this out of polyester taffeta like this is a doll cosplay. It is an 18th century cosplay, but it is a cosplay. So because of all of those reasons, I did decide to go the more like modern, AKA, you know, Victorian and onward method where you do flatline your outer to your lining as opposed to the 18th century method where they're just sewn together in a completely different way. <laughs> And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I have them all flatlined. They are now going to get sewn to each other. So the fronts to the side backs, to the backs, to each other, etc. And then I'm probably gonna try them on again. I also did cut out the stomacher pieces. The stomacher pieces, instead of lining with muslin, I'm just doing two pieces of the taffeta is my plan. At least that's what I've cut out so far. And I want to really like double check once everything is together in the final with the stomacher, just like how things lay out. Because my plan for the stomacher is literally just to put like right sides together, sew them all the way around the outside, leaving a little space to turn, turn it, press it, and then start to embellish. The other thing that I'm honestly thinking of doing, because pinning to me, like pinning a stomacher is annoying. And Felicity's stomacher has snaps on it. I think that's a pretty good idea. So I'm debating about actually putting the snaps on the stomacher. I just don't know how well they will hold. Like she's got the itty bitty like Barbie size snaps. They don't hold well, even on her and she's a doll. So it's like if I did, you know, Whopper Poppers, like would that hold or would the movement of going around a con all day make those come open? would pinning actually be better in other words in that case but like again going around a con all day with straight pins in my front sounds dangerous <laughs> so I know that that's what they did all the time but yeah um I do have a good amount of the yardage left by the way now that I've cut out um most pieces I mean I obviously have to get the sleeves out still but then it is trimming I went to Joanne's I got some laces for Felicity I looked for ribbon for her trim all the way down the front, um, but 
I could not find ribbon that matched their blue that they're running right now is just a different shade of blue than what they've run in the past, which is too bad because like I have this ribbon, which is a perfect match for the blue Tavana, <laughs> but now this ribbon doesn't match what they're selling in Joann's anymore. So yeah. Oh, and I ripped the skirt panels for the dress portion. So like those panels are put aside, but basically I will need to do all of this trimming out of the actual fabric instead of ribbon trim like on Felicity's dress. So my plan for that is probably to do pinked edges because pinking, which is like when you cut it with kind of a zigzag, um, you could do a scallop too, but a zigzag, like you use pinking shears. Um, that is a historically accurate method that they used to make it so like their edges didn't fray and stuff. So I'll have to see how well it works on this poly taffeta, <laughs> but that's kind of my plan is to do pinked edges and then her trim is just like box pleated. So that should be relatively simple. The trim on her sleeves, it's more complex. It's like a lot of ruched trimming and I don't know whether I would pink the top. She doesn't have any exposed edges in that and it's made out of the same dress fabric. So I have to decide that, but that'll be you know, a little bit down the road. I don't know if we will get to trimming in this video or not. I'd like to do at least some because it's actually coming together pretty quickly, which is good considering that deadline is looming ever nearer. But yeah, I found the lace for her pinner cap. Um, I have the lace for her sleeves. I'm looking at her, so that's why I'm looking over here. But I have the lace for her sleeves. I have the lace for the stomacher. I had put a poll on Instagram last night about like what lace to use for her stomacher. And at least as of this morning when I checked, you guys were like 75% all on one, which is good. That makes it easy for me to choose. So yeah, I have the lace for her stomacher. The only lace that I don't have necessarily yet is the little narrow lace that will go around her neckline but not much of that shows so I might even have something in the stash that'll work and otherwise I will go back to Joanne's and I'll pick something up for that. Um, oh going back to the more modern method of putting this together what that does mean as far as like edges go finishing edges is that I plan to uh, most likely do bias tape that will just finish this whole bit maybe even down the skirt but the skirt I can probably just fold because it's not a curve or anything so I'll probably just fold that in you know two times and then just stitch it and I can stitch probably most of that by machine because it gets covered with the trim which is really nice so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the or start putting the bodice pieces together um and then I think the next time I will talk to you we'll be trying everything on one more time just to make sure that it's all peachy hi Dora do you want to say hi? She heard me talking and said, hi, why am I not on camera? By the way, I thought I should just point out that we all match because Dora has her lovely little blue collar on and I've got my blue shirt and Felicity has her blue dress and we're making a blue dress and uh, clearly we like blue in this house, huh? What do you think? So I decided that I was just too tired to actually put on stays and try stuff on today. So I did the potentially foolish thing of like taking the next step in the sewing um and then I guess we'll see if that will burn me tomorrow when I do try things on but the bodice is all fully assembled now so you can see all the inside and the outside there and then you might notice that it looks semi-finished and that is because I put bias tape all along the front edges and neckline it is not stitched down the other side like you can see it is still loose but it is pressed down um, I also pressed up the waist edge so I'm not doing like a bias tape finish or anything on that because my plan is to actually do a little bit of real historical 18th century detail in that I will probably be stitching the skirts on in the historical method which is basically like you wind up kind of seeing the stitches but they get put up behind because like when you have a pointed bodice it's just funky how it works on the tops of skirts so it doesn't make sense to like take the top edge and do like right sides together so it's easier to like pleat that all up Oh, I'm gesturing over there because I also put the skirt panels together. So the skirt panels are together, but not pleated. I haven't finished the front edges. Actually, I could do that tonight. Maybe I'll finish the front edges and that way I won't feel like I'm going to bed really early. 
because it's early but I'm tired but like I don't really want to go to bed yet because it's too early for me to go to bed because it's like 10 o'clock yeah and I don't go to bed at 10 o'clock I should but yeah maybe I'll do that because that needs to happen regardless but anyway the bodice is looking like this and I also put the stomacher together I decided to put a muslin layer or not muslin but Kona cotton layer within the stomacher so basically I did this is how I did this I did taffeta layer taffeta layer Kona cotton layer didn't care what sides were what because there's really not a right side and a wrong side of the taffeta I just like put them all together pinned them stitched around the outside except for a two inch section about right here and then turned them so that the blue layers were on the outside so like if I can find that opening you can see the muslin in there um so it's not really like flat lined because I did it all at once but it gave it a little bit more body which I wanted and then adding oh I just realized I have to make freaking two of these well, I'm going to make another stomacher now, so I guess I'm going to cut that out, and I'll just cut half inch around all of these edges and make another one exactly the same method because Felicity has two stomachers, and I can't decide which one I like, so I'm making both of them. Yeah, so one of them's going to be the lace one, and one of them's going to be the ribbon one. And maybe I'll do that instead of finishing the front edges of the skirts right now. Um, because that's the type of stuff that I feel like I have mental energy for, whereas putting on stays, I don't. I don't know why, but putting on stays is a really big blocker. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with this. I will put on the stays tomorrow, but I'm gonna go make a second stomacher. Scratch that. That's silly. It's stupid to make a second stomacher before I ensure myself that the first stomacher will work. So, I will make the second one after I try on this one tomorrow with the bodice because duh so I have the bodice on and it is pinned into the stomacher front I really don't like the pins so I am definitely gonna figure out some other method I mean I know that I'm just pinning this kind of haphazardly but it's such a pain to put on and I already stabbed myself a lot so yeah I might do snaps I might do hooks I might do something different than pins because pins are annoying uh i like the flexibility of the fit but they're annoying the one thing that i think is not fitting correctly at all is this is so wide into the arms eye so i will probably find out more with that when i go to put the sleeves on which will be shortly but yeah it's it just seems very very wide i know it wasn't this wide for 18th century granted the seam allowance is still on there but i think that's wide even with seam allowance because like my where my bra straps would sit would be like right here that's kind of like the nook I'm not wearing a bra with this one because I just don't feel like you can wear a bra with stays like that's I think that's pretty impossible but yeah my I have very narrow shoulders and so like where they would sit is right here so that is like an inch and a half away from the edge of where I have it currently but um but yeah I mean I think the fit seems good so I think that I am ready to pleat the skirt to the bodice, I guess. In hindsight, it might make more sense, or maybe not hindsight, maybe foresight, it might make more sense to do sleeves first because otherwise while I'm putting on sleeves, I have this big heavy piece attached to it. So that is a good point. Okay, so maybe, maybe it's time for sleeves. I am also going to kind of finish marking the hem of the petticoat. I had started to do it the other day, but my friend was like here waiting for me to finish while I was filming uh, the stuff with you with the fitting of the mock-up. So I didn't want to be rude to her and, you know, just keep sewing while she's here waiting for me. Oh, and I can now also sew down the binding and everything, so that'll be good. I might do that tonight. I'm gonna go see a play, and then usually when I come back from seeing a play, I don't really have like the energy at that late hour to like do hard things in here and film them, so hand sewing is always good. So yeah, I'm gonna finish wearing the hem. I just don't know how short to make it. Like hers is ankle length, I think, her petticoat. And I know in the 18th century that was a thing, but it just seems so short. So I'm kind of thinking of doing like instep length. I mean, I am gonna be wearing this to a con, so I wanna be able to walk easily. Somewhere between instep and ankle is what I'm gonna go for, but 
yeah, let's get all that done. So as per usual, I'm doing a whole bunch of things all at one time. I've just finished marking the hem and I'm now taking off the bodice. So I figured, oh, let's look at the stomacher. Now we know that this base stomacher works, so I can make a second one with this base. But I'm also looking at the lace placement, like how distanced each motif needs to be from each other. So what I did was I measured the length of her stomacher because I looked at Felicity's stomacher and it's basically the same here, 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 here. It's the same. And then the basically the scallops happen three times and they're cut off right at the bottom so that you don't see any scallops there. But these are the same. So I measured all of this and found out how wide each of these motifs are. So this is 15 inches. These are one and a quarter inches wide, these motifs. And so I took 15 and subtracted one and a quarter times three. So I wound up with 11.25. Then I divided that by four and I wound up with 2.81. And that is how much of like the blank motif needs to show. So I made a little pink mark here and kind of tried to just eyeball it evenly, taking like two ends of this lace. And then I measured this distance right here so from the top to this flower so it'd be like one and almost a full second motif and wanted to double check that that was the distance from here to here and it is in fact the distance so that means that 2.81 is correct and basically I'm going to cut off the lace just above where the flower motif is because that's where it overlaps on hers is you just get that little overlap where the scallops are basically so I think that means that I want it to go all the way through to the top of the flowers. I might wind up cutting it down even a little further. We'll see. But yeah, I will cut it off up here because that is the excess that I don't need. Well, I just have to tell you the stupid mistake that I made that will make things harder. I cut this one out, not thinking about the fact that this should have wrapped around to the other side. So I just cut it like right there. So that's annoying and I'm going to have to kind of disguise that somehow. I don't think it'll be very obvious. There will be narrow lace along the top of this as well that sticks up, but it's still annoying. I did remember to leave a seam allowance down here so that I can wrap this to the other side. So that will be a nice clean edge. I didn't care about wrapping the sides over here because this goes underneath the like part that you pin in anyway. So basically there's about like three quarters of an inch or so of this that just isn't seen at all. Um, and I can just like zigzag stitch those and I don't even care. But yeah, there is the stomacher lace. I need to actually sew everything down. It's all pinned at the moment and I will need to add that little lace up at the top, but that is what it looks like. By the way, there's something that I find really kind of interesting about this project because Sostein and I are making this like at the same time. I think she started before I did because she's using like historical methods to build hers. But yeah, we're making this at the same time. Like as I'm making this, I am seeing her post really similar questions or like teasers or whatever to Instagram. Uh, like today, I think she posted a picture of her stomach or lace and I had posted my poll of my stomach or lace like about I don't know, 36 hours ago or something like that. So yeah, I just find that kind of interesting because I feel like ours are going to be really, really different and we have very different methods to getting our end result. We are both doing the fitted back, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that she was doing it until after I had chosen the fitted back for my own, but she is making hers out of like I want to say like $50 a yard silk or something like that. Like something that is just insanely expensive to me. And she is also using like fancy trim and like more trim just in general. I think like her trim that she has made, she just posted a picture today or yesterday of like her trim that she's planning to do for the skirts. And it's like a lot. I mean, it's very 18th century, but it's a lot compared to like what Felicity the doll has. Um, and like she posted a picture of her lace, like I mentioned, and it's like some fancy lace from some shop in New York. And you know, I've got my Joann's like $3.49 per yard without the coupon. And I had a 40% off coupon uh, lace. By the way, I required one yard of the lace. This is how much of that yard I have left for full width. So I did my calculations like spot on on that. So yeah, one yard of lace for the stomacher. Hopefully I will only need one yard of ribbon for the stomacher as well because it's what I bought and that I got from Etsy. But yeah, I just find it really interesting that we are both making our own versions of this outfit, but we're making it in like 
two completely different ways and we've got like the budget cosplay way that I'm doing and then like the historical no budget type way that she's doing and I find it fascinating and I'm really excited to see her finished look and what it looks like. I mean I personally think that every version of this that I've ever seen has been amazing. Like Samantha Couture Courtesan I think is her username. She did this dress a several years ago at this point and she started with a sack and then I sh think she changed it from the sack to a fitted back at some point but hers is just like so gorgeous and Kate from Willoughby and Rose just made one for her daughter which is just like oh my god so freaking cute and she did both stomachers which I thought was adorable and she did a sack back though um and then yeah now so seen is making hers and I'm making mine I don't know if anyone else has made it as well but probably but I'm just like, I just love every version because it's my favorite American Girl outfit ever. Well, no, it probably is. It's my favorite attainable one. Like the Addie Cape Island dress. Someday, someday. But it's my favorite attainable one. And yeah, it's just filling me with so much joy that like everyone loves this dress so much. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get back to work because I want to take this petticoat off so I can press the hem and get that all ready to be stitched. So as it turns out, I really did not accomplish really that much more from the last time that I spoke to you. Uh, I don't remember what I showed you with the stomacher, to be honest, but the stomacher I think is in the same state where I just need to sew down the stuff on the other side. Uh, and otherwise this first stomacher will be complete besides the lace that I haven't purchased yet. I do still need to make the second stomacher. Really what I've been doing is hand sewing and I'm already a slow hand sewer, but with this poly taffeta, I have to use a thimble. Like I tried at first to not do it with a thimble and my finger is mad at me now. Um, and so I have to use a thimble and thimbles just make it even slower for me. I am not good with a thimble. And um, yeah, so I have a little more than half of the petticoat hem done. I did also do the front edges of the skirt panel. Um, I have not yet pleated it to the waist. And then I still have to do the binding like around the front of the bodice. So I have a lot of hand sewing to do. So yeah, I'm gonna do that between this video and the next video, but that is gonna be it for this video here. So next week, I would really love to finish this if possible. Comic-Con did extend the deadline. Forget if I told you that or not too. So I do have a little bit more time there. Um, but yeah, I would love to get this, at least like the dress finished next week. There are probably the other stuff like mitts and uh, muff and pinner cap and everything that might be a third video is kind of what I'm thinking. But next week would be sleeves, all of the decoration on the dress, doing the other stomacher and then like just kind of well putting the skirt on the bodice that's an important part so uh yeah i have a lot left to do on felicity but i'm super excited for how she is going so far so if you liked this video please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me please go ahead and click subscribe and a little bell icon to be notified every time i post a new video i do post videos here on youtube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on tuesdays and other costuming content out on saturdays but i post every day over on my instagram so please go follow me on instagram Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to take this time to thank all of my absolutely amazing patrons, particularly those at the Romantic, Victorian, and Edwardian level tiers, who are Sharon, Mirage, Laura, Jean, Audra, Emily, Kim, Linda, Maria, Sarah, Saracen, Tiffany, Denise, Liz, Kimberly, and Nurse Anita. Thank you all so, so much. I absolutely could not do this without you guys, without your support of my channel. And thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!